Thanks to Park International High School over the past 18 months, we've had significant changes in the work that we've done with curriculum. Um, 18 months ago, we would have been seen as a very traditional school in terms of traditional faculties with discrete disciplines with their learning. At the start of 2017, we put a plan together which uh, initially was around setting up uh, what we'd call interdisciplinary teams. So we've called them uh, PLCTs in our school. So what they were, were four um, teams. One was called the STEM team, one a language and communication team, one a healthy lifestyles team, and one was the arts. And uh, I can't say that I take um, this idea it was my own uh, uniquely. I got it from visiting Heathfield High School and the work of Alastair Brown at Heathfield. It's really kind of something quite radically different because if you looked at our school, we just met in terms of an English learning area, a maths learning area, humanities learning area, a PE learning area. There was no connection across the curriculum going on. Um, so just having a sense that, that a school had created a structure where staff actually did meet and talk about interdisciplinary learning um, was useful in itself. The second anecdotal thing that happened when you meet an interdisciplinary learning teams, and Dylan Williams talks about this, is that teachers start to talk about how they teach, so the pedagogy, rather than just the content. We had to identify um, your key change agents within those teams, so all schools would have those people, the people who are eager to um, try new initiatives and, um, and work them through the school, the early adopters of new practice. And then finally, there a meeting schedule around how we did it. So we are a school that's had for a long time an early dismissal on a Thursday afternoon. So we have two hours of professional learning time a week. And we've been really keen to structure that to make absolutely maximise the time the staff work together to uh, for student learning outcomes. Um, on our meeting schedule, you'd see now, we have a mixture of those PLCTs and a mixture of discrete um, discipline um, meeting time. The STEM team, in terms of our work, spent a lot of time clarifying what their intent was going to be. It took really semester one of 2017, and that's one of the key messages that's come from Banksy Park, was to not rush the work that we did here. So after having done this work, I did, I've done the PD with Simon Breakspear, which was around um, implementing change. And of course, Simon Breakspear talks about really clarifying what you want to achieve, incubating small initiatives, finding out and testing whether they work before you amplify them out across the school. And in retrospect, that's exactly what we did. So for the first semester of 2017, our STEM team um, really clarified what STEM was for us at Banksia Park International High School. And we came up with a range of things, it included project-based learning, included interdisciplinary learning, but also included subject-specific um, uh, su uh, subjects or disciplines where students could really embrace a particular area. And an example would be our coding and robotics program, which now runs from year 8, 9, 10 and into year 11. What I'd hope you'd get from this message is that if you're a school that had not started anything in terms of interdisciplinary learning or anything in terms of STEM, that there's a model that you could go and have a look at. Heafield was one model that did some work around this and we also connected and tried to do some work that was similar. When we looked for models 18 months ago of around a comprehensive secondary school um, doing some work around interdisciplinary learning or STEM, it was pretty thin on the ground. The, the examples people would talk about, of course, were things like the ASMS, which is an outstanding school, but it was built from the ground up to do that work. Just totally different to a 1970s school which has, you know, was built for a different purpose. So in terms of an approach to um, starting this work, I'd say that we've got a model that um, has gained some traction. It's made differences in terms of teacher practice and it's had direct outcomes for students, certainly in terms of their engagement and they're broadening their experiences at school.